Five, four, three, two, one, zero! If we look at the impacts of a corporation's activities on the society at large, in other words, beyond profits, then we find that almost $2.25 trillion worth of costs are imposed to society. Carbon emissions, greenhouse gas emissions, which are damaging to the economy and to, to the climate, freshwater usage, pollutants and chemicals, which are emitted into the atmosphere or into released in water or into the soils and cause damage to human health. So all of these, if we calculate the economic sizing of these damages, that's almost 2.25 trillion. It's not an acceptable situation that such a large external cost is imposed upon society by the actions of corporations. And they're not doing this because they want to harm society. They're doing this because the system allows them to do it. And indeed, the system is focused on creating corporations as just profit engines, financial profit engines. Well, if you want to ask when the first glimmerings happened, it was when a friend of my wife's asked me, why are some things worth money and other things not? Economics treats the community and its benefits, family, community, all these benefits, friendships that we get as externalities. It treats nature and its flows and its benefits as externalities. And her question was very simple and very important. Why? Why must we not account for these? Why must we not understand that these things are valuable even if they don't have a price which is measured in money terms. So this was a, to me a passion. It was, it was a passion that I felt I needed as a citizen of the planet to invest my time and energy in because I had kind of understood the issue perhaps earlier than the average man on the street and I just felt it was my duty to bring it out, to do as much work to develop this issue and understand why is it that we can't seem to account for what's valuable. You don't know what your economy is because more than half your economy is invisible to you. The economic value of nature and services is not captured by your mechanisms. Freshwater security is a problem, food security is a problem, energy security is an issue. Fish are drying up to the point where they are less than a tenth of what they should be. These are examples of ecological scarcities driven by a lack of appreciation of the values that flow into the economy from nature. And that means that Nature is economically invisible, that's not a good thing. Make it economically visible by accounting for these values, accounting for the free flows that you're getting from nature. And once you start accounting for them and recognizing the value that rises in them, you will do what is obvious. Nobody ever, ever voluntarily destroys his own house. But we are voluntarily leaving our best productive assets, that is natural assets, ecological infrastructure, we are voluntarily depleting it day by day. We wouldn't do that to a factory or a house or a car. Why do we do that to a forest or a wetland? Thank you very much.